What's good y'all, it's your boy Ross back at again with another video. So I'm gonna check out 11 most savage comebacks that destroyed a WWE wrestler, man. It's always a good time when you see someone in the ring and they're having a promo battle and one of the wrestlers end up kind of going a little bit rogue, maybe cutting below the belt to get that ooh and that ah reaction. It, it, it. It, it intensifies whatever's being said and done in the ring, whatever feud is being had when they start getting a little bit personal or they, they, they start going in and it starts to seem like they're blurring the lines between what's real and what's not. I love that, especially um, when it comes to wrestlers trying to hype up a match or hype up a feud. So we're going to check out some of these moments where wrestlers had an awesome comeback or whatnot and it, 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 it got a little bit rogue. Appreciate all love support. Let's get right back. WWE right wrestlers it. have been known to push the limits on what they can say during a promo. Whilst WWE wrestlers taking shots at each other back and forth is common, sometimes a wrestler takes things further and delivers a hysterical yet incredibly offensive insult. Join us now as WrestleMania looks at 11 hilariously brutal insults in WWE. Number 11, I'll never forgive your mother for giving birth to you. Yeah, that was has been known cold, to throw bro. random Vince insults evil. out during promos, and in 2001, he delivered an insult to his very own son, Shane McMahon, that highlighted that he knew no limits when it came to his own promo material. During a segment of Raw in March of 2001, Shane will be attacked by Triple H, and this led to Vince getting in Shane's face and screaming, I will never ever forgive your mother for giving birth to you. This is brutal, bro. Whilst this line was controversial, it did further the kayfabe issues between the two ahead of their WrestleMania 17 encounter, and this was the Attitude Era, a time in which WWE would say and do whatever mm -hmm. they wanted. Number 10, retrieve your balls from Stephanie's yep. purse. Classic line one by of the my boy. Top matches from on my the boy Super Randy Orton. Card in 2019 was Triple H taking on Randy Orton. I believe this was Triple H's last in ring match against Randy Orton. I, I don't think he planned for it, but he had to stop due to his uh, medical condition. I believe, correct me if I'm wrong, y'all, this is Triple H's very last in ring competition match. For one final time, whilst this match announcement came out of nowhere, the two legends of WWE did engage in a memorable war of words a few days before the Super Showdown event. During a promo segment on Raw, Triple H and Orton would go back and forth with various insults when suddenly Orton delivered one incredible insult. Mm -hmm. Can you promise me that Friday before you step into that ring with me that you retrieve your balls, balls from, from Stephanie's, Stephanie's purse? purse yep. <laughs> and what made this insult even funnier was that both Triple H and Orton burst into hysterics, <laughs> leading to some fans speculating that this was an unscripted remark from Orton. Number nine. Yeah, which it, it definitely gave that unscripted vibe. Like he just, he kind of just said that himself and even Triple H like, that was a good one. That was a good one. Posting workout Ooh. videos on your wife's oh, Instagram. Oh yeah, this John one was Cena wild was delivering too. some exceptional promo work on the road to Which was crazy because he was really building this up. And I was like, okay, I'm, I'm really looking forward to seeing this match. Uh, they haven't faced each other in, since John Cena was like a heel early in his career i'm looking forward to this only for us to get a squash match john cena gets squashed and we don't even get the match that i think all of us fans were hoping to have undertaker felt like he was in the best shape he's been in a long, quite some time and the reason why we got that short ass match is because vince mcmahon thought it would be a joke that the undertaker does all this hard work to get back into in-ring shape only to have a squash match because he thought that shit was funny and he said, fuck the fans. WrestleMania 34, he was going to face The Undertaker at the big event, and the dead man would be absent for 100% of the build, yeah. which meant that Cena had to sell the match on his own. Which he did. Cena delivered some kayfabe breaking insults <laughs> towards The Undertaker during this time period, but one of the smarter ones was when Cena praised the dead man before directly mentioning his real-life marriage with Michelle McCool. Cena would declare, this you're not cold. broken down, because if you was broken down, you wouldn't be posting workout videos on your wife's Instagram. <laughs> Now, this comment received a thunderous ovation from the yeah. crowd, as they knew they had heard something that shattered the illusion of The Undertaker, mm -hmm. and this was one of the first times in WWE history that the relationship between the dead man and McCool had been mentioned on WWE TV. He built this up by himself, bro. There was no... The Undertaker didn't do nothing. It was... John Cena just built this match up by himself. That shit was crazy, bro. 
V. And we should have got a, 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 a actual, However, an actual match. However, your sister, a WrestleMania 28 <laughs> build featured a compelling feud between Chris Jericho and then WWE Champion CM Punk. During the feud, Jericho would get extremely personal mm -hmm. with Punk, and he would often bring up Punk's family to try and get into his head. One of the best segments from this yeah, entire this really rivalry good. was on Raw when Jericho was seemingly apologizing for mentioning <laughs> Punk's family. Jericho had promised that he would Jer never he mention Jericho Punk's father was so, ever again. Was so this good, moment bro. quickly took a U-turn when Jericho stated, However, your sister? This Jericho so would then discuss Punk's sister's substance abuse problems was masterfully delivered and truly helped sell the fact that Jericho was this detestable Bro, he heel. was so he good. Nothing to get an unfair mental advantage ahead of WrestleMania 20. Bro, heel Jericho is fucking fantastic in WWE. I'm, I'm going to keep saying that. It, bro, him with the sparkly jacket just was, this in my opinion, is some of his best work pre-AEW. <clears throat> some of his best work. Some of his, oh man. Eight. Number seven, thong wearing fatty. He <laughs> delivered some incredible promos throughout his WWE career, but his promo before the 2000 Armageddon pay per view is perhaps his most celebrated. The Rock would hilariously berate every competitor in the six man I did it for the Rock. cell match. When he got to Rikishi, he would mark Rikishi's prior heel turn before saying, I did, did it. it. I did, <laughs> I did oh, it. Shut your mouth, you thong wearing fatty. <laughs> The Rock's delivery of this iconic line was so funny that it still makes fans laugh over Facts. two decades after it initially happened. Now, before we get into number six, be sure to subscribe oh, and hit that notification bell for daily wrestling videos and follow us on Facebook for exclusive lists. Also, check out our new channel, WrestleMania Shorts. Number six, 1998 called. About 2001, Xbox Heat <laughs> had taken full effect in WWE. <laughs> Whilst Xbox still had something to offer the company, he was just lingering around the lower mid card and he was seen as an annoyance by the WWE audience. During a promo segment on Raw between X Park and Edge, Edge would deliver a savage promo which completely killed any star power that X Park had left. And as far as being part of the most popular group in WWF history, well, hanging out with cool people does not make you a really cool person. <laughs> oh, and by the way, 1998 called and they're sick and tired of you. So feel free to join us in the year 2001 any time. <laughs> now you look confused, so let me explain. You see, at one point, I was into this whole goth thing. And I developed my very own persona. It's a whole character development. You should look into it sometime. You, Number five. Oh, bro. Yeah, Edge did kind of bury that nigga, bro. I was into this goth thing. And then I had something what you call character development. <laughs> Something you need to look into, damn. Plus, Booker T got real short and real fat, real fast. You ain't no Booker T. Ah, yeah. During WWE's <laughs> invasion storyline, they would attempt to do a mini feud on TV between Stone Cold Steve Austin and Taz. Taz yep. During an Austin promo on SmackDown in which Austin was calling out Booker T, Taz would leave the commentary table to confront Austin in the ring, but Austin would immediately put Taz down with a brutal comment. <laughs> Unless Booker T got real short and real fat real fast. You ain't no Booker T. <laughs> to Taz's credit, he handled the comment insanely well and his verbal rebuttal was exceptionally delivered. This feud could have been something truly special. Yeah. It's a shame that fans never got to see the talented duo have a 1v1 pay-per-view showdown. <clears throat> Number four, I'll bounce you quicker than an ECW check. <laughs> In early 2004, John Cena had ascended to become one of the WWE's brightest it's young Cena faces. right here. Thug like Cena's Cena. rap persona had truly resonated <clears throat> with fans. And I mean, word like Cena, my bad. I mean, he, he, one of the standout <laughs> raps Cena he did. He was embracing his thug side, Dr. Thugonomics. Delivered in 2004 was on Paul Heyman and Cena threw in a hilarious line which stated, I bounce you quicker than an ECW check. This is where people were fans of uh, Heyman's inability uh, to pay Cena. his talent <laughs> during ECW. And what made the comment even funnier was that Tess on commentary stated, I have one of those. <laughs> he said, I have one of those. <laughs> And it's crazy. We've come full circle. People love this version of John. And now anytime John Cena is out there, people love him. It's crazy how things come full circle <laughs> over the years. Number three, <clears throat> I've got time to watch you spray that stupid ass water <laughs> all over the crowd. But I love this. Triple H was out there doing his entrance. 
<laughs> Stone Cold said, cut his stupid music. <laughs> I got time. Will you spit that stupid water all over the ground. That was so great. This is why Stone Cold is my favorite wrestler, bro. Of all Stone Cold Steve Austin's run as an authority figure on Raw in 2003 was well received by fans. Austin was incredibly funny, but he had the ability to help tell serious storylines whilst never overshadowing the roster at the time. One of Austin's more comedic moments took place in May of 2003 when he called Triple H out on Raw. As Triple H was making his trademark entrance and was about to perform his water spit, Austin would declare, I got time to watch you spray that stupid ass water all over the crowd. Triple H's reaction was brilliant as he looked genuinely stunned that someone had verbally berated him whilst performing his own entrance. Number two, even a 747 looks small yeah, when it we, flies through the Grand Canyon. This was, this was a the wild one too. The two feud between Triple H, Stephanie McMahon, and Chris Jericho was criticized by some fans. It did feature some memorable insults from the game directed towards mm -hmm. Jericho and Stephanie McMahon. During a promo segment on Raw, Stephanie would criticize the game's performance mm. in the bedroom. And this was when Triple H interrupted and stated, even a 747 looks small when you're flying it into the grand canyon. <laughs> that was wild. It was a magnificent line that the crowd absolutely loved. Yeah, that was wild. It's totally surprise that the specific clip from the promo is often shared across social media. Yeah, number nah. one, she does the faith breaker better than you do. Yeah. <laughs> that, bro, it's a different time in wrestling, man. <laughs> the Undertaker's final ever feud in WWE saw him engage in a personal rivalry mm -hmm. with AJ styles mm. for this yep. final feud the dead man would strip back his dead man persona and introduce fans to a more human side of the undertaker yeah. which was described as a mix between the dead man the american badass and mark calloway yep. during the promo hyping their wrestlemania 36 match taker would reference the fact that both aj and his wife michelle mccool have the same finishing move mm -hmm. i think you're mad because she does the faith breaker aka the styles clash better, better than, than you, you do. do she got it over that shit was cold. Seen the under that shit was cold seeing him talk like that just it was bro i was like man i wish we could have seen more of this this was so cool bro he was, bro, he was going in. <laughs> they could deliver an out-of-character promo was unbelievable. It was only fitting that the Dead Man's promo was met with universal acclaim. Facts. Some fans even calling it the greatest promo of Undertaker's entire career. No, this promo they was good, bro. I, I really wish we could have gotten this version of the Undertaker. Like he said, it's a combination of the American badass with <clears throat> the Undertaker mystique, but at the same time, kind of humanizing him since he's later in his career he's on social media now so it's a combination of all these things you know what i'm saying and it worked bro we just didn't get to see it for a long time because after that he hung it up which i am all for but i really wish we could have seen a little bit more of that bro that shit was cool man so comment down below <clears throat> let me know some other savage comebacks from WWE wrestlers that, you know, put other wrestlers in their place if they weren't on this list. Because there's a plethora that you can go through <laughs> and just <clears throat> go down memory lane with. But I appreciate all the love and support you guys showing on channel Road to 150K. And I'm still going to speak to YouTube Wrestling Champion of the World. Appreciate y'all kicking me. See you on next one. Peace.